What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here, my name's Luke, and this is going to be a full commentary run through Digistruct Peak at Overpower Level 8 with Sniper Zero. I'm giving you guys a quick look at my gear, skill build, and badass rank before we get started here. You'll notice I'm using a Corrosive Slag and Fire Pimpernel, in addition to a Shock and Corrosive Lyuta. I'm using an Antagonist Shield, a Legendary Sniper Calm, a Fire and Corrosive Bone of the Ancients, as well as a Stockpile Relic at different times, and a longbow slag transfusion grenade. I wanted to get a full commentary version of this run out there, just so that you guys would have any tips and tricks that you might need to know before attempting this challenge, just in case anyone is interested in attempting it. I'm going to do this entire run with no moxie weapon and no B, because they are not needed at all for Sniper Zero. Obviously this run can be more difficult or easier depending on what type of spawns you get, so keep that in mind. I'm going to get started here and deal with this first room. This is the spawn where we are going to get at least one badass surveyor. Um, and so that will be something to watch out for. It's easier if the badass surveyor ends up being a shield surveyor instead of a repair surveyor because then it is likely to stop on an enemy like this one is doing here. And that will allow you to kill it before it starts dropping triple shock blast on you so long as you don't kill the enemy that it is trying to provide a shield to or all of the enemies that it might provide a shield to. I am using a um, Fire Bone of the Ancients right now, I am pretty sure, because the first room usually has more difficult flesh enemies than um, armored enemies, is what I've noticed. Once you deal with all the enemies here in this spawn configuration, a couple surveyors and three shock nomads will spawn. There are several different spawn configurations, some of them can be rather difficult. Um, I find usually the most difficult one for this particular setup and skill build is the one where there are going to be two enemies spawned on the bridge where the spider tank sometimes spawns, and I find the spider tank one to probably be the easiest. Now it's not to say that the one that has two enemies there on the bridge is always going to be incredibly difficult. Sometimes it can be actually pretty easy, it really depends on what type of enemies spawn and really what type of surveyor is going to spawn. If it's a badass shield surveyor, you'll probably be alright, but the badass repair surveyors, if they're accompanied with some pretty big and healthy melee enemies, maybe rabbit skags, or ultimate badass psychos, it might be a little bit more difficult. But as you can see, I've worked through this first room now, and now we're going to move on to the scorch room, which is the second room. Now one thing you can do there at all of those chests is put on your stockpile relic and that will encourage the game to drop more ammo for you from those boxes so that's what I did there. Now I do get this spawn here that is going to have turrets and a couple enemies as soon as you get through the gate here and this means that we're going to get pretty heavy surveyors throughout this including four repair surveyors when the double scorch spawns so that's something to watch out for. These turrets can definitely be taken out pretty easily from afar with the Pimpernel. It doesn't really matter which one you use, Shock or Corrosive, because they don't have too much health anyway. So if you just shoot those in the base, they'll probably die in two or three shots maximum. It's actually possible to kill them in one shot if you get it just right. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the rest of the enemies here. It's actually not entirely necessary to kill these guys, I don't think. You can just run past them. But... I will be retreating to this area when I take on Scorch and the Surveyors, so it will definitely help to have them um, already dealt with so that I don't have to deal with them then. Now there's an RPG loader here. He has a corrosive rocket launcher, so we're definitely going to want to take him out as quickly as possible so that he doesn't provide us with a corrosive damage over time, which could obviously be very irritating. I'm also going to try to kill this second ion loader before he gets his shield up because that can be irritating as well. You may have noticed when I was showing my skill build earlier, I definitely did not have points in velocity. And that's because there are several enemies in here that can be very difficult to take out with velocity and the Pimpernel. Loaders are not among them. With loaders, you can actually have five or six points in velocity and still get by very easily just shooting them lower. However, little enemies like spider ants and midgets and stuff and, you know, small skags are definitely going to be a lot harder to take out with velocity. And so that's why I definitely don't spec into velocity when attempting this challenge. As you can see, when I get some small humanoid enemies slagged and kunied, I then just shoot them in the head with the Pimpernel or the Lyuta because I know that it will kill them in one hit, especially if I have that one-shot one kill bonus, which is being boosted by my legendary sniper comp. When I take out surveyors, I usually slag them with my slag Pimpernel, and then switch to my Lyuta if I have my shock Lyuta equipped. If I don't have my shock Lyuta equipped, I'll then just continue to shoot them with the slag Pimpernel to take out their shield. And once their shield is depleted, I will switch, usually, to the Corrosive Pimpernel. And if they're flying towards you, it will take them out in two to three shots normally. 
um, so long as they're slagged. If they're flying away from you, it's a little bit harder to get the extra pellets to hit them, and so it's probably most appropriate to shoot them when they're coming towards you. Sometimes it will take up to four or five shots, just depending on what angle you're at at the time you shoot them. So here's where the four surveyors are going to spawn with Scorch. This is probably the most difficult spawn configuration for this room. Um, so you really have to watch out here, and this particular challenge can be rather difficult. But it can actually be worked through, you know, with relatively no difficulty, so long as you stay pretty far away from the Scorches and are able to kill the surveyors quickly enough to keep your grim up, which will, you know, help your shield in case you happen to catch a fire or shock damage over time. When taking out the Scorches, I usually use my Shock Lyuta because I find it to be pretty effective. I throw my Deception, try to get them lined up, and then shoot them in their critical spot, which usually works out pretty well for me. Trying to find the Surveyor that I did slag right now, though, and he's being a little bit difficult to find, so I'm just going to slag another one since that slag had probably worn off. Now that I've got the shield depleted on that one that's back there, I'm going to go ahead and try to kill him. As you can see, I took him out in one shot there, and that's because I jumped up and he was flying at a level more or less even with me, and that makes him easier to take out. If they're at a really extreme angle and you're shooting them from far below, um, I notice that sometimes that's a little bit more difficult to deal with them. So, those are just a couple things I've noticed about shooting surveyors with the Pimpernels, and if you're able to take out the surveyors, that definitely is going to make Digistruck Peak a lot easier for you because oftentimes they're some of the biggest nuisance and most challenging enemies that you face. So we're almost done taking out the surveyors now. Oftentimes when you get them to about 20% or less health, they'll freeze in the air a little bit and pause for you to finish taking them out, which is really nice. So a couple of scorches were close, or at least one scorch was close to uh, asking for repairs. It was nice that the um, surveyors did not repair him, and I was able to take him out pretty quickly. I've still got over 20 rounds of ammunition left, so I will definitely be able to take out this next Scorch um, pretty easily with the rest of my ammo from this Shock Lyuta, so that's good stuff there. He turned around on me a little bit quick though, so I'm just going to shoot him with my Pimpernel to finish him off. Unless, you know, my Deception comes back, at which point I'll use the Lyuta again. He might die to Kunai even, so who knows. Yeah, he died to Kunai. Good stuff. Alright, now we're getting to what can definitely be the most difficult part of this Sniper Challenge. Without a Moxie weapon, if you get terrible behavior and, um, you know, just overall irritating mechanics from Dukino's mom, it can definitely be very difficult. You'll notice for this part that I do equip my Corrosive Lyuta and Corrosive Bone of the Ancients. Probably the easier spawn here is the one where Dukino's mom spawns right away with several midgets, but I get the one where there are going to be a few little horn skags before we fight Dukino's mom. This means when fighting Dukino's mom, there will be no chances for a second wind off any enemy other than Dukino's mom because you fight her alone. And that can definitely make it kind of difficult. If Dukino's mom is going to spam the shock ball attack, it can be definitely um, a tough challenge to work through since that shock ball attack will definitely put you um, at health gate right away and then she spams multiple balls and they're kind of hard to avoid even if you make use of that rock wall there in the middle. And sometimes the transfusion grenades will take a little bit of time to get to you, which can be definitely pretty difficult to deal with. You may have noticed that a second ago there, I did go ahead and melee one of those little skags making use of killing blow, which I am specced into. And you can do that when you have relatively low health enemies, um, you know, down in killing blow range to conserve on sniper rifle ammo, which can sometimes be a difficult thing to conserve during a strictly sniper run where you're not using a stockpile relic. Obviously, I am using a Bone of the Ancients right now, which I obviously find useful for the extra elemental damage, but also the increased cooldown rate, which helps not only with damage, but deception as well. So I let this Skag here uh, deal a little more, more damage to me than I wanted to, and so I did have to throw a Transfusion Grenade there. One thing that I will recommend for Dukino's Mom is throwing preemptive Transfusion Grenades. That way, the Transfusion Trails can get to you in case she does that shock ball attack. So there she's doing the shock ball attack which I'm talking about. You'll notice that even though I was really far away from her and I was just coming out of deception, her last shock ball she threw you know so far and it still was within range of me and ended up dealing quite a bit of damage to me and so I need more transfusion trails to come. You'll also notice when I fight Dukino's mom here that I use the Lyuta to build up a few stacks of critical ascension while doing significant damage and once I have those stacks of critical ascension built up that is when I'm going to switch to the Pimpernel and get the extra damage from that end. And I find that that works out very well. 
If you can get Dukino's mom doing this little beam attack where the rock is positioned between you and her, then you'll often find it easy to get some really good and sweet spot Pimpernel shots on her. So that usually works out pretty well, and then you'll be able to carry the 40 or so stacks of Critical Ascension that you will most likely acquire, given proper behavior from Dukino's mom, into this next room. And I find it better when the Black Queen spawn right away, that way you can use the uh, Critical Ascension that you acquired on them, and it's pretty easy to even build up more stacks on them as you kill them. And so I'm just going to try to keep my Critical Ascension stacks up as long as I can here, because obviously they will help take out all of these enemies, and so that's something that I find useful. But um, when you get this spawn, there's always going to be a couple surveyors, and I've noticed that usually they uh, spawn as repair surveyors, so they're going to be attacking you probably right away. If they spawn as shield surveyors, they'll be a little bit more docile, and you can deal with them a little bit easier. So that's just something you have to watch out for in this room, and obviously surveyors have no critical spot, and so that usually makes it so that uh, they kind of waste your critical ascension a little bit, which is a little bit aggravating since, you know, you went through some trouble to build it up against Dukino's mom. After you take them out, though, um, the rest of the enemies in here usually aren't too bad. One thing that is kind of irritating is you'll notice that rat over there to my right is hanging out on that ledge up there, and sometimes they'll backpedal onto that, and it's pretty irritating when they do that, actually, so... That's something that I find irritating about this room, and eventually that rat will jump down, and then we'll be able to move on to killing the uh, two Black Queens. When you get the spawn, however, I guess it is kind of guaranteed that you won't fight the Black Queen when there are other enemies nearby, and that actually works out pretty well because sometimes fighting the Black Queens with all of the other spider ants present can be a little bit tough. You'll notice I threw on my stockpile relic there to come open these two chests, because I think that that was going to increase the likelihood that I would get sniper rifle ammo drops from that. These ROUSs aren't too tough, but um, they do have a little bit of area of effect on their particular eye blast thing that they do, so that's something you need to watch out for, and you'll notice that I, th I think that was what did damage to me there. It might have been one of these Emperor Spider Ants, so when that happens, definitely throw a Slag Transfusion Grenade and try to get your health back. These Emperor Spider Ants can be tough, I find it is very helpful to throw a deception to try to encourage them to do their roar thing and allow you a chance to get behind them to get good uh, Pimpernel sweet spots on them. The ROUSs, given the way they walk and hold their hand over their face, is actually pretty difficult to hit a critical hit on them. However, with the Pimpernel, you'll still be able to deal a lot of damage to them by shooting them kind of in the waist where all the pellets are still going to spawn within, when, inside of them, and so that works out pretty well. With the Black Queen, I like to get behind her and try to hit her sweet spot. And if you do that, you'll be able to kill her pretty quickly. Now keep in mind that the webbing from these Black Queens can not only slow you down, but it does also deal a lot of damage. When you get the Black Queen to a certain health amount, she will spawn a number of small little um, ghost-looking spider ants. And when she does this, um, she does it, I think, at about 60% health, and then she does it another time at around 30% health. So if you kill her quick enough, she won't be able to spawn six total spider ants, but most likely taking her out with Sniper Zero, she will spawn at least two or three. Um, that's one of the reasons I find it better to kill her with melee, you know, if you're playing melee zero, because you can take her out in one shot and she won't get the chance to spawn those little things. Luckily, those little things are pretty easy to take out with Sniper Zero and the Pimpernel, especially since they often kind of line up on top of each other and create overlapping hitboxes for boar. Now this room is kind of the critical part of my melee, or of my Sniper Zero run, excuse me. Um, I like to stack a little bit of Critical Ascension here on the last bonehead that's going to be in the room, because it makes the next two parts, um, Doc Mercy, which I find can be pretty tough with Sniper Zero, and also the Assassins to be a lot easier. Um, and so once you get Critical Ascension in this room, and I'll show you how to do that, you can make what I think to be the two hardest parts, excluding Dukino's mom if she has... Um, you know, bad behavior, to be a lot easier and a lot more efficient. And I find that this is definitely the best way to take out Digistruct Peak as Sniper Zero. And this is kind of the trick of it. I'm going to go ahead and finish off that Surveyor there with my Corrosive Pimpernel. The trick to this is kind of not using any of the ammo chest in here until you've got it down to one um, bonehead left. That way you can make sure and maximize the amount of critical ascension stacks that you will be able to acquire, and also knowing when you're to the last bonehead, which can, at times, be a little bit difficult. This is an enemy that we'll face quite often in Digistruct Peak. It's the ultimate badass slag skag, and I'll show you how I usually like to take them out. 
So I'm going to go ahead and deal with this um, surveyor before we deal with this slag dog here. One thing I like to do is kind of throw my deception and hope that it goes into its little head bowed slag spitting animation because when it does that it's very easy to get um, good Pimpernel sweet spots on him like I was just able to there. And when you do that those guys will die a lot quicker than they otherwise would have because they actually have a significant amount of health and can be fairly difficult to take out. Now sometimes marauders can be kind of difficult to take out here. If I remember correctly this guy gave me a little bit of trouble and his friends did too. So that's something to watch out for when dealing with those guys. Um, marauders like to really backpedal in certain rooms especially if there are barriers and stuff nearby and they'll fire at you with almost perfect accuracy as they backpedal and stuff like that and sometimes they'll strafe your Pimpernel sweet spots making them a little bit more difficult to take out so um, that's just something to watch out for I guess and when they do that sometimes it's easier just to snipe them in the head when they're behind cover because obviously you can't really sweet spot them from back there another thing I found kind of irritating is that uh, when your antagonist is really spitting out balls, sometimes your Pimpernel shots or other, you know, gunshots will hit those um, balls from the antagonist and actually fail to go through and then hit the enemy behind them, which can be extremely irritating if you've lined up a critical hit and then the slag ball blocks it. So that's something I would definitely look out for, and um, it's one of the reasons why you probably shouldn't just stand there and shoot you know, while your antagonist is spitting out balls like I was a second ago there. So now we've got three boneheads spawned in addition to this little psycho here. I'm going to take out this little psycho and then I'm going to carefully kill two but not three boneheads and knock the grenade throwing arm off of the third bonehead. Bonehead is a boss that is going to throw a number of different elemental grenades if you don't knock his arm off and those damage over time from the elemental grenades can very easily kill you. So that's something to watch out for. Bonehead is fairly weak and he has um, crit spots that are really great for taking out with the Pimpernel. So you'll notice there that I did go ahead and knock the grenade throwing arm off of that bonehead there. And so I'm going to go to this bonehead back here and get slag on him and then kill him and leave that other bonehead alive. Now it might be prudent to go ahead and take note of which type of gun each bonehead has since you're going to leave the gun arm there um, for stacking critical ascension to pick the bonehead with the easiest gun to or the weakest gun I should say and that will make it so that it's easiest to survive and stand right in front of him and stack critical ascension you'll notice that I threw on my stockpile relic there and that is so that I can hopefully get the maximum yield of sniper rifle ammo from each of these chests I am also below the threshold though where the game is going to wait grenade drops, or at least I was until I picked up those grenades there. And so what I'm doing is keeping my sniper rifle ammo low, making sure that I am above that threshold for grenades, and then go around and open all the chests that I can, and kill any jack statues or, I don't know, cardboard cutouts that I can, and try to get as much sniper rifle ammo to pick up in the room as possible. There are a significant amount of chests in this particular room. Um, area so you will be able to acquire quite a bit of sniper rifle ammo and now it is definitely possible to make it through Doc Mercy and the assassins without pre-stacking critical ascension like I'm about to do however it becomes much more difficult to accomplish a sniper only run through Digistruct Peak if you're going to do that and so this will make it a lot easier because obviously I think that those two areas are probably the hardest to tackle with a sniper zero and this will give you a much better opportunity to do so and a much better chance at making it all the way through um, without going down or getting into any real trouble in those two areas. So what I'm doing right now is making sure that I'm going to be at or near max sniper rifle ammo and then I will begin to stack critical ascension on bonehead. I will not however do this before I have put on my um, crit stacking gear which will include a low level vlad off sniper and a chaotic neutral rogue comm to make it as quick as possible. So, before I do that though, I am going to want to drop the guns that I'm going to need after I stack Critical Ascension, or the gear I'm going to need after I stack Critical Ascension, which will include my Shock Lyuta, as well as my Legendary Sniper Calm, and a Fire Bone of the Ancients. And so, I'm going to put on my other stuff now. I'm definitely going to make sure that I keep my Stockpile Relic on here while I'm in pause, drop the Bone of the Ancients, and put the Stockpile Relic back on, that way I don't lose my sniper rifle ammo that I worked so hard to acquire. Now I'm going to begin stacking critical ascension here on this bonehead. This is why I don't knock off his gun arm. I do this because I find it easier to actually get these critical ascension stacks now. 
the bonehead that I left alive here does have a fairly high fire rate weapon, which isn't ideal, but we'll make we'll make it work in this situation here. Just try to find an area where he'll be content to shoot you without jumping at you because Bonehead does have some AI where he likes to kind of jump at the player. If you'll find a place where he's content to shoot you and doesn't have a great line of sight at you, like he kind of is now, you'll be able to get um, a good amount of critical ascension off of him. So it's important to, you know, just kind of pick the right spot and then get as much stacks of critical ascension as you can, or as many stacks of critical ascension as you can. I'm above 100 now. And I'd say that really you don't need any more than 150 to work through. But since there is a lot of ammo on the ground and it's you know freely available to me here, I am going to try to get even more stacks than 150. 150 is probably good enough. But if more are available, I'm going to take them because they cannot hurt you. They'll only help, and that's for certain. Just try to do it quickly, though, because the critical ascension stacks do have a lifetime timer, and they will eventually run out. So I do still have a little bit of ammo over here where the jack placards were. Um, I think I picked up a little bit of it already, but I'm going to use these few rounds um, to go ahead and get a little bit more. And then there were three chests over behind me as well that I'm going to open, or they're already open, but I'm going to use, and then get a few more stacks of critical ascension and enough ammo to then kill Bonehead, and then I will be moving on. So you'll notice I just get up to around 250 or so stacks probably here. And then I switch to my Pimpernel and finish taking out Bonehead. Now when I do that, I will then begin to rush into the Doc Mercy area, but make sure that I replace my low-level Vladoff Sniper with the um, Lyuta and replace my um, Chaotic Neutral Rogue Calm with my Legendary Sniper Calm and the Stockpile Relic with the Bone of the Ancients because those things will definitely help me. So now that I'm in this area, I want to get a critical hit as quickly as possible to stop my stacks from decaying, you know, as soon as I can. Because obviously, until you hit a critical hit, they're going to decay. And once you get a critical hit, that will cause them to hold for just a second. Now that I have that, I can go ahead and, um, you know, be a little bit more patient and definitely keep getting critical hits as quickly as I can here. Because obviously, when I get a critical hit, with this amount of critical ascension, it's going to wreck enemies pretty easily. There are a couple boxes right there, so I figured I'd go ahead and uh, open that while I waited for Doc Mercy to spawn. Doc Mercy can be pretty tough to take out um, without Critical Ascension, so that's one of the reasons I like to stack Critical Ascension before getting to this guy. So, I got a few stacks off the guys there, and I'll be moving on now, trying to rush towards the Assassins as quickly as I can. If you move quickly, you'll definitely be able to make it through the Assassins and Doc Mercy before your stacks totally tick out. And you'll actually also be able to make it fairly far into the Saturn room as well, which I actually do in this run, and I find that it helps me take out all of the enemies in the Saturn room as well. So I got the spawn here where there are going to be three badass marauders, which really isn't that bad because their critical spots aren't that difficult to hit with the Lyuta. And I'm going to take them out pretty quickly and then move on in towards the assassins. I have plenty of ammo with the um, amount of critical ascension I have, so I'm not too worried about opening any boxes or anything. I definitely want to take out Assassin Wreath, who spawns right away usually, in most scenarios, sometimes he won't, but I want to take out Assassin Wreath as quickly as possible, because he is the most offensively dangerous with his um, high intensity and prevalent fire damage over time attacks that he does. So that's something to watch out for there, and um, you definitely don't want to get in trouble with him. I get the spawn where we get Assassin Wreath and Watt at the same time, and then a Spider Tank. And then after that, Assassin Roof and um, Assassin One. And so I try to slag these guys and then take them out. Um, their critical hits are really easy to hit with the Lyuta because of the high fire rate and, you know, pretty straight shooting weapon that it is. And so I usually use that to, um, you know, kill them easily. But sometimes I'll also use the uh, Pimpernel as well. Because even if you don't hit critical hits with that amount of critical ascension, you'll rip through those guys pretty quickly. So you'll notice that I still have well over 150 stacks as I get to the Saturn area here, which is nice because if you find any enemies that may be tough in here, such as a Rabid Skag, you'll be able to take them out pretty easily. Now I end up taking a huge blast from something there, I think it was probably a Surveyor, that took my health down pretty damn uh, heavily, so that's something you have to watch out for. You definitely don't want to die um, up there because you might not have a clear shot on an enemy before your fight for your lifetimer runs out, which would definitely be bad news. Oftentimes a spider tank will spawn down there, and when it does, you probably want to take that out right away with boar because it can be fairly dangerous. There are also going to be quite a few surveyors in this room, which, you know, the amount of critical ascension you have will only help with, so 
definitely take out the surveyors uh, if they're shield surveyors while they're still shielding an enemy um, before you kill that enemy because it will make them even easier to take out. We're going to go ahead and kill this guy here. And then we're going to kill this surveyor up here as well. Now, you can get rabbit skags in this room, which can be pretty difficult to take out at times with Sniper Zero. One, one way that you can take out rabbit skags is to throw your deception decoy near a cliff, which there are plenty of in Digistruct Peak. Ooh, we do get a rabbit skag here. Or you can just, you know, kill them with the Pimpernel and careful evasion and stuff like that. Obviously, I have a bunch of critical ascension right now, so it will be pretty easy to take this guy out. But keep in mind that rabbit skags can be a big pain in the ass, so that's something to watch out for. Finished him off, though, and then we're going to go ahead and kill this guy. But like I was saying, you can throw your decoy near a cliff there, and then use execute to kind of push those guys off the cliff with knockback, which will kill them. And that usually works out pretty well. I'm going to try to get a critical hit on this guy here, which will cause Saturn to spawn while I still have a few stacks of critical ascension. My stacks of critical ascension, though, are going to begin ticking down rather rapidly because they are reaching their lifetime timer. However, I still do have a few stacks of critical ascension here as I begin to shoot these guys in their turrets, um, giving me a better opportunity to get massive bore action with them because, you know, the extra damage from the critical ascension, even with a relatively low number of stacks, is still going to be pretty handy. So, as you can see, I blew that Saturn up all the way. And then with this Saturn, um, I took him out, you know, almost in one shot and then I had another turret left to kind of finish him off and so that worked out pretty nicely that's kind of what you're looking for when you take on the Saturns sometimes the boars don't work out right and you'll kill all their turrets while they still have a significant amount of health left and you just kind of have to lay into them with the Pimpernel so I'm gonna run back here to this ammo machine real quick stock up on ammo and we'll be moving forward into the next area the next area is usually pretty mundane and uneventful However, sometimes you will get rocket loaders spawning, which can be a big pain in the ass. One cool thing about this next area is that it does have a fallback location that some enemies, including the likely spawn of the ultimate badass slag skag, will not go through that particular gate um, in front of the fallback area, and neither will the spider tank or a couple other enemies as well. And so you can actually retreat to this little area, which you'll see me doing, to maintain your safety pretty well. Um, one pretty prevalent spawn in here is where the turrets are going to spawn up there on that little ledge. The one I get here though is with the spider tank, so I'm just going to take that opportunity to knock out the first spider tank as quickly as possible. There will be another spider tank spawning though, and he'll actually spawn and kind of get on me as I deal with these skags here. So that's something to watch out for as well. These skags really aren't that bad. They're not, um, I don't think I've ever seen a rabid skag in here. But if I did, I would probably try to knock it off this cliff over here. I'm not entirely sure. But you'll notice how this spitter skag kind of stands there at this door and won't come into it. And his spitball will only hit that gate there. And there's actually a number of different enemies that will do that, including the spider tank and, like I said, the uh, slag dogs as well. I'm going to take out this um, spider tank before he really gets too much damage on me, and that's always good stuff. And then we'll just continue to take out all the spawns in here. We are going to get a number of humanoid spawns now. And this Slag Centurion Ant. I think this is the first Slag Centurion Ant we've faced in this run. These guys can be a little bit difficult to take out with zero, no matter which type of zero you're playing. Um, because their critical spot's a little bit hidden, and obviously that Slag can be very dangerous. Especially if you're playing melee zero. Um, so I just like to try to aim for their critical spot, which is on their butt there, under that armor. And take them out, um, you know, without them killing me or anything like that. When they do that roar there, it's usually pretty easy to hit them in their critical spot. Which can, at times, you know, one-shot them with the Pimpernel if you hit it just right. So that's always good stuff. I'm going to take out these guys from afar now. So that I make sure I maintain my safety during this portion here. We've got a badass um, Marauder over there. And it looks like we also have a Sergeant Loader with a fairly powerful Torg weapon that we're going to need to take out as well. So... Those are things we need to watch out for, and we definitely don't want to die way back here because it might be difficult to get a second wind. So I'm going to take out this sergeant loader here because he's kind of got the flank on me here if I'm facing the other two guys, and I don't want to be attacked from that angle. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to take out this small marauder and then the badass marauder. You'll notice that the small marauder is executing incredible backpedal mechanics at this moment, executing a lot of rolls and hiding behind these boxes and this little... Um, sandbag or rock wall, whatever it is. So that's something to watch out for there. 
when taking enemies out from long range that are hiding behind those little um, obstacles there, I often use the Lyuta because it's pretty easy to pop them in the head once, and it will take them out, you know, um, pretty quickly, and then you won't have to end up wasting a bunch of ammo trying to deal with them. So now that I've got close to this guy, I'm going to go ahead and take him out with my Pimpernel, and then we'll be moving on in towards the next area. It looks like we still have one more rat to take out, but they have relatively low health and or often Pimpernel bait if you're spec'd, you know, not spec'd into velocity, I should say. So, he's, you know, jumping around trying to find any gear that might have dropped. That's kind of what rats do. And it can be irritating when they do that, but um, he's dead now. So, we're moving on into this last area. The last area can have a very irritating spawn where you get um, multiple badass surveyors that happen. When that happens, I like to use my deception and kind of encourage them to kill themselves on the invisible wall at the top of the cliff, but sometimes that's not always possible. Luckily, I do not get the spawn that's going to have the multiple um, badass uh, surveyors here, so that works out pretty well. I get the one where we have multiple um, exploders that are going to come at me here, and I'm just going to take them out using a combination of deception and the pimpernel. Now, you'll notice in this particular spawn, we are going to get a train here, that's going to spawn multiple turrets and then two surveyors and a war loader. So I just get out of the way of the turrets, no need to deal with them. And then one of the surveyors pauses here and I'll kill him. And then the other one I'm just going to kill as quickly as possible with my um, Lyuta here because I have plenty of ammo. And then I'll take out the war loader. You do not need to take out the turrets in order to move on. So that's good stuff. I should note that. Uh, there are several bonehead spawns that also have the turrets, and I find it pretty prudent to head over to the right side of that particular area and take out the turrets as soon as possible because they can be a big nuisance. So when taking out, oh my god, what the hell, with Sniper Zero, what I like to do is run up here and slag him with the Pimpernel. Um, not shooting him in the boar spot, shooting him in one of his legs, usually the left front leg to slag him, and then I switch to the Corrosive Pimpernel for the one shot. And it works almost every time. I guess I shot him right front leg there. So... That works out pretty well, and it's an easy way to take him out. So as always, guys, I thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you found this guide to sniping the peak with Zero at Overpower Level 8 helpful. I tried to give you as many tips and tricks as I could because I think it's a pretty fun challenge. I ended up getting the Bearcat as my pearlescent for this particular run, which I'm obviously going to throw off the cliff here. I don't find many of these pearlescents to be incredibly useful, and it's always fun to watch them fall into the abyss. So I'll be sure to show you my gear and skill build one more time. Feel free to pause it if you need a little extra time. But as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. Otherwise, I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.